Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week we've got loads of new tech. New bikes, custom shades, the bike vault, your upgrades, plus our main talking point. Is suspension on road bikes just a gimmick? It's a can of worms that, John. It is a can of worms. A can of worms. How many times can we say can of worms? <laughs> Hot tech now, we're gonna begin with a brand new bike. Check this out, this is the Parley RZ7 Aero bike. You ready for this? Oh, take a look at that. What do you reckon of it? I like it, I think it's really tidy. It's I used bad. to own a Parley actually, yeah. the, the previous Aero bike model to this one, which was called the ESX. You can't buy it anymore, but you can get it in Zwift. All right, so you have to buy it with your sweat drop. You do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, I think that looks, it's a really nice looking bike. It looks really cool, but, mm. I have to say, if you if you took off the Parley logo and replaced it with an S Works logo, oh dear, they, these aero bikes are yeah. all starting to look very similar, morphing into one sort of shape. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I quite like the uh, the aerodynamic disc caliper fairings on it as well. Yeah, they're very cool. Were they the first people to introduce? I think they were, weren't they? Well, they did it on their TT IR. Um, time trial bike. Oh, we yeah. saw it at Eurobike a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah, it does look good. And it's all, it's all about integration on that bike, isn't it? You can, can't really see one cable. All I can see on it was one uh, DI2 cable just popping out the rear end. Yeah, the stem looks pretty pretty cool as well. Can buy that. But we've got some other new bikes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, take a look at these. These are two new bikes from Look. Oh, you had to do it, didn't you? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> The 765 Gravel RS, which is Look's first gravel bike. And then we've got the E765 Gravel, which is Look's first e-gravel bike. And they're gonna sit alongside the 765 Optimum e-road bike. It's quite a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah, there's a lot of e numbers going on there. Yeah. It reads like the back of a packet of Sunny Delight. But <laughs> the, uh, they are bikes and um, yeah, they're both carbon fibre frame bikes and the e-bike version has the 250 watt Fazua motor, the same one that was in the Pinarello Nitro e-bike that Lloydy rode in a previous video. But uh, for more details, stay tuned because we are going to be doing a first look video on both those bikes. Pretty cool. I look forward to that. More new bike news then. Walmart, yeah that's right, Walmart, they've launched a new bike brand, haven't they? Viathon. Now, despite that rather robotic sounding name, I have to say, uh, they are gonna be releasing bikes within three different genres. So we're gonna have road, gravel, and mountain bike. And the finishing kit is gonna be coming from brands such as Physique, FSA, and Zip. So expect some pretty good things from them. Yeah, they're going all out. I mean, the, the bikes are set to retail between $2,300 and $6,000. So these are premium bikes. Yeah. And the other thing is the frames are not open mold from China or Taiwan. They've actually own and design their own molds for these for these bikes as well. So they're you know pretty premium product. Yeah. And of course Walmart they know a thing or two about cycling, don't they? Because they invested in Rafa previously. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing these. Yeah, I think they look cool. Yeah. Right, more tech later. On to our main talking point now, which is is suspension on road bikes a gimmick? Now Paris Roubaix has just finished the dust has settled on the cobbles. It's an amazing race, it never disappoints. Not just from a racing perspective though, but also from a tech perspective. Bike brands often use the hell of the north to showcase their latest and greatest endurance bike models with built-in comfort features such as, well, suspension. Yeah, and we can look back in time because road bikes with suspension have actually been around for quite some time. Many of you though will just remember when Team Sky used the Pinarello K8S, I think it was, back in 2015 and well, your jaws probably dropped at the mere thought of it. The first mountain bikes, well, they didn't have suspension and they were literally bone shakers. But once those forks had been developed, some road teams thought to themselves, hmm, maybe these would be quite good to use in the Cobble Classics, Paris-Roubaix in particular. They did, um, well, RockShox made a limited number of road forks. Maybe it would catch on. And in fact, two-time winner Gilbert Duclos-Lasalle was given permission to use the forks by his manager, Roger Leger, on the condition that Greg LeMond was allowed a pair as well. <laughs> I love that, a marketeer, knowing that LeMond would bring all of the publicity to the team. Yeah, that's right, so Duclos-Lasalle, he used them way back in 1992 to victory a year later at the race, and I remember reading an article in Road Bike Action in 1993 all about this. Uh, Paul Turner of RockShox was literally harassed by half the peloton 
to use the fork. So, you know, we had a couple of mechanics there who were going around all of these old school cycling teams fitting literally these futuristic forks onto bikes and running into all sorts of different problems. But hey, his job was done. Yeah, well, they had, they were lighter than the mountain bike forks. And they also had a sort of a cool drop out, um, cool lockout mechanism on the back. And there was also quite a trick a uh, titanium steerer on them yeah. as well. But Cannondale and Bianchi also sort of tried to latch onto this and experiment with their own suspension designs, but didn't should, really catch on. Should we have a look at them, mate? I've got a couple of pictures here. Yeah. So let's just have a quick cheeky little look through. There's right, the there's the Bianchi full suspension. Look at that, rear shock. There's, a rock, there's those rock shocks. Yeah. They're nice, aren't they? Again, that full suspension from a different angle. This must have looked Look so futuristic in yeah. 1994. The interesting thing for me on these bikes though, is that it's it's that thing of, do you know the anecdote about the NASA spending millions and millions of pounds developing a pen that can write in zero gravity? Yeah, I've got one, it didn't work. Well, and well then, I tried it underwater. And then the Russians just took a pencil. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's this thing of, it's a bit like that. You look at these bikes and they're doing all this engineering on the frame with the suspension. But then they're riding, what, 21 millimeter tires? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that Cannondale with that head shock. Do you remember those old head shocks? Oh, I just can't imagine as much travel there. I mean, let's not forget as well, Trek, they released a bike uh, with a rear shock that George Hincopy used back in, what, 2005, I think? Something like that? Yeah, I mean, and well did it. No, and also suspension stems too that we saw over the years in various guises. Well, they didn't really stick around much either. No, and it was quite interesting to see that, especially for the most part of the last well, 20 years, mm. that the pros just abandoned suspension completely, and bike brands did too, and they just sort of returned to, well, double-wrapped bar tape. <laughs> a few years back, we saw the aforementioned K8S being used by Team Sky with those Pinarello bikes, and well, it didn't really catch on. And we also had the Future Shock on specialised Roubaix models, and again, it didn't really catch on that well. And in fact, I have heard rumours that even some riders were using it, but completely locked out, so they weren't that big fans of it. Yeah, but this year we did see a modified new version of the Specialized Roubaix with an updated Future Shock system that crucially now has a lockout. Mm -hmm. And also we saw the new Pinarello Dogma FS, uh, which has suspension front and rear, and it's smart suspension. But for more detail on that, we have a video on the channel that Lloydie did, so check that out. Yeah, it makes you wonder if these bikes will be more popular with those traditional cyclists who want a bike a little bit more comfort, but still look the part, if you see what I mean. You know, they don't look over the top like those bikes which we just showed on the screen moments ago, which yeah. quite frankly, looked like a big barrel of springs waiting <laughs> to explode or something. Yeah, but I, the other thing to point out with the new Roubaix is that three out of the top five riders at Roubaix this year, including the winner, used that, that bike. Yeah. However, if you fancy something different for drop bar rough riding, then there's been a lot of tech advancements and uh, new products come out in recent years. So Lau Forks spring mm. to mind. Oh, see what you did there. <laughs> uh, Sai took them to Iceland uh, last year and they have these sort of, well, sort of fiber, uh, glass fiber springs in there that give 30 millimeters of travel. Very unique looking, but. Yeah, certainly nothing color. else out there looks like that, is no, there? No, no. Uh, and also, if this year's Sea Otter Show, which has literally just happened, is anything to go by, then, well, some of you may actually remember last year, back on the Tech Show, I think episode number 17. Before my time. Yeah, good memory. <laughs> yeah, it was actually. <laughs> God, you've been here ages. Uh, uh, we actually took a look at Niner's Magic Carpet Ride Bike, which was a 3D printed plastic model. Uh, this year, though, it's really turning into reality. It's a rideable bike with 40 mil travel at the front and 50 at the rear. It's kind of like a, an old school, well, full suspension mountain bike with drop bars. Basically, that's what it is I'm describing, I guess. Yeah. I really like the versatility of suspension, and it's great to see that these systems are being continually improved, especially with lockouts. Um, but, I mean, ultimately, does anything beat the sensation of riding a really light, stiff bike on a perfectly smooth road? No, but we, well, we rarely actually experience that ourselves, do we? Yes, fair. <laughs> However, on our roads. I mean, let's face it, mate, history has shown, although that back in 92 and 93, well, two major races were won using suspension, it didn't catch on. You know, the KAS that was used, sadly that didn't catch on. Is this the moment that we turn a new leaf? I don't know. I'm not, you know, I'm not convinced. And I think ultimately, if, I could own all the top-end bikes 
I wanted, then yes, I would definitely have one that had suspension fitted to it. But realistically speaking, most people are only going to have one top end bike. At which point are you going to go for one that is slightly heavier, slightly more expensive because it has suspension built into it? I don't want to start seeing Roubaix being won just because someone has got, you know, this ultimate bike just to go across it. I still want it to be that challenge. Yeah. You know, the, the physical side of it rather than the tech side that wins the race. Yeah. Well, it's a good point actually because Roubaix isn't supposed to be easy, is it? I mean, no. that's the whole point. The reason why we love it yeah. is because the cobbles hurt and it's really hard. Yeah. And I think any time they get a bike where, if in the future, we have these amazing bikes that just allow the riders to glide with impunity over the cobbles. An armchair so, ride. <laughs> it's just going to be rubbish. Yeah. Um, it will take away the spectacle. Yeah. In my eyes. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, let's hope they don't go putting sort of 150 mil shocks on bikes and stuff. Know, where just, my, just, it's just my thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It, we want to know what you think as well. So let us know in the comments section down below. Yeah. Is suspension on road bikes just a gimmick? Get involved. More tech of the week now. And first up is the news that SRAM has acquired PowerTap, the, well, the power meter brand. Does that mean we're going to see some, well, power pedals from SRAM? Who knows? Yeah, it'd be interesting actually what they're going to do with this because SRAM have never made a pedal, have they? No, but you just assume that PowerTap has a lot of pe uh, pedal patents. Mm, that's not easy to say, is it? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. I get a tongue twist. <laughs> anyway, back to Parry Roubaix now. Uh, and Ollie can testify this because you went out there, didn't you? Or in the lead up to it last yeah. week. Off to Roubaix, I've got a date with uh, Sags. Bit weird sounding there. Yeah. What these say? For me, it's gonna be great. Don't do that, please. You didn't tell me how the date went with uh, Mr. Sagan, but well, I'm sure he will at some point. Gentleman never tells. No, nope, there we go. Anyway, uh, no, there's not many hacks and bodges used on bikes these days out there, is there? Uh, no, there isn't actually. There was a well, yeah. Less than I've seen in previous years when I've been there, for sure. But I've been scouring around the pictures and well, let's talk about some of the things which we've spotted. Firstly, Wout Van Aert, the cyclocross superstar. He's, he's not bad on the road either, is he? Oh, he's all right. Yeah, yeah, he had a pretty good race, didn't he? He had a bit of, bit of bad luck, but he still did extremely well. Well, get this, he was using a single one of those cross top brake levers there yeah, on top of his handlebar. Now, it's surprising he's opted for that because, well, he's so used to riding on terrible surfaces. The other interesting thing was there was confusion that that actually wasn't his bike and it was a team uh, mate's bike, which you may have heard mm. in the commentary. That was wrong. That is his bike. The numbering on the bikes was wrong, apparently. That's what we've heard. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. So there you go. Well, there we are. Um, and also, we discussed last week how Mads Peterson from Trek was using one bike on his SRAM Access group set and uh, well, the Tour of Flanders. And in Roubaix, he was also uh, seen using one by again. Yeah, in fact, not just that, Ollie. His whole team were using one by there, which is now right. This is going to create a bit of a storm with the people out there who love one by. But the benefit I see of using a double chain set in something like Roubaix is that if your chain was to dislodge, you've got another chain ring there, or uh, your front derailleur to bring it back onto the chain ring without having to stop or anything. But they were using chain catchers, and well, I didn't hear any reports of their chains coming off either. So that is great to see, isn't it? Especially yeah. on the roughest roads of northern France. Yeah. The squad of De Kernick Quickstep weren't taking any chances with punctures in Roubaix. And to put what I'm about to say into context, there's a video we did on Peter Sagan's bike for Roubaix. If you've not watched it, watch it after this one. And in that video, I explained how the bike has no levers on the through axles. To remove the, the through axle from the bike and do a wheel change, the mechanics have a drill with a six mil Allen key built in and they like a sort of Formula One pit gun. With sound and, effects. Yeah, and people commented on that video saying, well, if I buy the bike, how can I change my, my wheels? I don't have that thing. Or like, what happens if Sagan gets a puncture, he can't take a wheel off a teammate? Well, he can, you just need an Allen key, a, mm -hmm. a six mil Allen key with you, and that's all you need. But to thinking of that, the De Kernick mechanics, they strapped six mil Allen keys to the seat post 
of uh, all the riders' bikes so they could do just that. Yeah, but get this, so all of that was done, all this forward thinking, a uh, you know, great bit of forward thinking really. Mm. Uh, sadly, none of them actually got to show off their mechanics skills because get this, none of the riders from either Bora Hansgrohe or De Kooning Quickstep had a puncture in Roubaix, which is quite incredible, isn't it? Yeah, that is, that's interesting. It says a lot for the, that they were using special 30 millimeter uh, S-Works tires. Hell of the North. Hell of the North like that, weren't they? Yeah. Right, remember those pretty cool Roker sunglasses last week yeah. for Nicky Terpshire, those cobbled classic specials? The ditched ones. Yeah, well get this, a mate of mine, he's treated himself to a couple of pairs of these Oakley flight jackets from Optique Van Gorp over there in Belgium, and check out these flight jackets. Alistair, apologies in advance if he scratches them, but thank you so much for loaning them to me. Uh, but yeah, they are exactly the same. We've got Tour of Flanders special edition ones here, oh, and also is. some Paris. Well, you're not having them. Uh, and also, we've got some Paris Roubaix cobbles too. They look cool, don't they? Nice. Yeah. They know what I look like in them. Uh, but yeah, do you know I've got a line of Flanders tattoo? Yeah, I, seriously, I have. I used to get some really weird looks in changing rooms in Belgium, thinking maybe I'd won it, but I've never won it. Anyway, more tech next week. It's now time for screw riding upgrades by upgrades where you submit before and after media. Yeah, me yeah, good. Media good. Use of word. your upgrades um, with a chance to win the ultimate prize, the GCN apron slash cape, capron. Is it a cape? Is it an apron? We just One don't know. Yeah. Well, well, we've got some, some news actually, haven't we? Yeah, but some good news, I reckon. Yeah. Go on, tell them. Right, so, this is the last time a Capron is being given away. Yeah, it's true. Because we've got a new prize. Yeah. It's now going to be a GCN ass saver. Yeah, and after getting soaked on the way into work this morning, I wish I had one on the back of my set. Yeah, it's the end of an era though. Yeah. But you can still buy the Capron in the GCN shop. At shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. Anyway, we need to announce the last ever winner of the Capron. We, we do, yeah. Who and it? well, okay, it was between Jeff's Merck's and Dave's Shed. Uh, winning with 52% of the votes, a very, very close one. It's got to be the Mercs, isn't it? No, it was Dave's Shed. Dave's Shed. Dave's Shed. Dave's, shed. Dave's Shed. Yeah, Dave's Shed. Who voted for that? Well, 52% of the viewers. Well, the Dave, viewers don't lie. In your shed, I hope you make use of your capron. Yeah. Also, barbecue season's coming soon. Oh, so. that is true, actually, yeah. I do like yeah, a barbecue. Have a barbie. Yeah. Right, so get in touch on Facebook to arrange delivery of the last ever one to be one on the show. Anyway, right, we need to go on to this week's contenders, don't we? I hope Dave can catch. Yeah. Hit Dave. Right, <laughs> okay. First up this week is Bastien from Dijon in Burgundy in oh. France. It's uh, Bastien's neighbour gave him this Bianchi frame for free with a carbon fork, carbon handlebars, and a carbon seat post. Bastian started looking for a group set and wheel set and wanted to keep the bike fully Italian. So Campagnolo was chosen. Some super record, some chorus, and a Campagnolo Sirocco wheel set. Bastian built everything by himself, and finished it off with elite Bianchi bottles and cages. Total cost, 1,000 euros, Ooh. and turned a cheap alloy bike into an 8.3 kilogram Cool bike. There's the frame. So that's, before. The, that's the starting point. Yeah, that's the old. It's a uh, 2006 Bianchi SL3 Reparto Course. Yeah. Or something like that. And that's it afterwards. Oh, it's nice. It's that. nice, but. That bar that tape. Bar tape. That and that's bar tape. Uh, okay, it's not bike vault, so we'll go easy. Um, it's, a, it's a hell of a transformation. Yeah, that is, isn't it? A nice a, touch. Yeah. Nice work. And for the team. money that's gone into that, that's, that's, yeah. a, that's an incredible piece of work. Right. Right. Go on then. Well, next up, we've got Craig, who's from Doncaster in the UK, which means we may be related, Craig. <laughs> anyway, Craig has just finished his conversion of his old TT bike to an aero road bike on the lowest budget possible. Lots of late nights on eBay. I can relate to that. A couple of bits from Wiggle and a few from Planet X, just down the road in Rotherham. All in, including the cost of the original bike, just 392 of the Queen's English pounds. Bargain hunt. Craig says, it's not cutting edge, but for the money, it rides amazingly well and fast. That's before, that old Ribble TT bike. Look at this. Whoa. Bit of paint as well, lick a, right. lick a paint. 
Hang on, 392, what wheels were on it before? The same wheels, let's go back. No, how did he get all of that for 392? Well, he's from Donny, he probably stole them. Anyway, um, I can say that because I am from Doncaster. But right, okay. That's banging. Well, that looks that really is, good. isn't it? I, I'm going to try and get back up at some point. So hope to see you on the Hatfield 10 mile TT course, Craig. You'll probably beat me. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, who's it going to be there? Bastian or Craig? You decide. Vote up there, top right hand corner. I know who he's going to vote for. Well, obviously, Craig. Yeah. I'm going to go for Bastion. Is that Bianchi? It's nice. <laughs> and it's not in that Celeste colour. Yeah, there you go. Right, Bike of the Week time now. The moment of the show where you get to vote for your favourite bikes that we pit head to head. So, first up, we need to actually announce last week's winner, don't we? It was between the BH of uh, Burgos BH team and also the Geos of Team Manzana Postabon. Manzana Postabon. The Colombian outfit. Mm. One of my favourite squads, actually, that. And we're winning with 52% of the votes was the Geos of Manzana Postabon. 52%? Yeah, again, 52, that sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, this week we've got the new specialised Roubaix with its updated Future Shock mm. and versus the new Pinarello Dogma FS. So two oh. suspension road bikes sticking with our main talking point theme. Which one though do you think is the nicest? One full suspension. And yeah. one front suspension. Big differences there. Mm. You decide up there. Right, bike vault time now. The moment of the show where we rate your submissions of your bicycles, your prize and joy, either nice or super nice. So if you've got a bike you want to submit, make sure you use the uploader tool down below. And who knows, maybe, just maybe, it'll go into the show. We get literally thousands each and every week. And it's, well, a pretty hard job for us actually to pick them out. It and is. what happens, Ollie, if uh, they get rated super nice? Oh, that's the bell, isn't there? Yeah. Do you want to ring it this week? No. Okay, not a problem. Right, start us off then, Ollie. First up, we have got this, which is from Ryan in Liverpool. Ryan has uh, got his single speed fixie rebel there. What's it that? What are you doing? <laughs> right, okay. That's my Ringo voice. <laughs> What do you reckon of that, John? Well, it's a nice looking fixie, that. So it's a road bike that's obviously been converted into a fixie. Importantly, it got brakes, so he's legal. Do you know what, those bikes were so popular, like back early, mid 90s, everyone had one. And it's outside the Liver building, isn't well, it? Well, he's gone all out yeah, there, Yeah, because he? he, he's, well, he's pulled my heartstrings there, and he knows I'm a big Liverpool fan. Have you got a ticket for the cup final, Ryan? Don't know, but something he is going to get <laughs> is a ring of the bell. Ryan, get in, one nil. Right, okay, next up is Millard from San Diego in California. Uh, Millard has got a Viner Maxima 3.0. Oh, it's a nice looking bike then, isn't it? Say bars, yeah. Yeah, looks like a, one of those SMP saddles with a slight nose dip on it. That's, I think that's an old team bike, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. That's an old Christina Watchers team bike. It was like a Danish outfit. Yeah. Yeah, it's done well, isn't it, that bike? Um, you know what, everything's lined up. It's, it's tidy, that. Yeah. I like it. I like his handlebars as well. Yeah, I like, I like, the, I like the red anodized bits and pieces too. Oh, right, who have we got next? Uh, next up, we've got William. Somewhere on Vancouver Island, British Columbia. I hope he's not lost. Yeah. Well, anyway, William! He's got his, he's got <laughs> Search his, party's gone out. He's got his track bike, um, which he's converted over to a single speed winter and Hill climbing bike. Another, another. It's a very speed. tidy looking Mercs. That, yeah, isn't it? isn't it? Look, and he's got a GCN water bottle. Tell them what they always know. They, don't they? they, they know. know what they. He knows they what know. He's doing. William knows. Even if he's lost, he knows. Yeah. He knows he's lost. He's got two rear lights as well. Safety first. Well, I tell you what, it's not that remote though, is it? Because he's got some sort of table in the background. I like it. I, I like, like it. it. I'm a bit, I'm a bit just... annoyed by the crank arm position. Yeah. But are we going to forgive that because it's because he's lost single. Speed. Yeah, we could do. Yeah, because uh, well, it's impossible to get your tire logos like you know lined up and all that yeah. with a single speed unless you basically join the chain <laughs> at a certain point. Yeah, I, yeah. Like, I, I like the I like the bar tape as well. Actually, mm. I think it works with contrast. Well, wow, doesn't it? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, shall we? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Right, William, <laughs> skinnier teeth. Okay, next up is uh, Wouter in his uh, in his backyard. In The Hague, in the Netherlands, or The Hague. Depends where you come from, how you want oh, to say that, doesn't it? The Hague. We've got a Kogan Myata Road Winner 84, 
and a Koga Full Pro from 2009. And Wouter says, what do you think of my Kogas? Well, I'll tell you what, that one from 84, it's in good condition though, isn't it? I prefer the, the 84 one. I was going to say that, but look on his bar tape, he's got that light blue, it looks like electrical tape or something. Around the top bend, towards the stem, oh, you see to, that? Yeah. It's hard, isn't it? Because it's Do you know what, too I'm, many on, options. On, the, on the older one, yeah. I'm super nice. Yeah, because of the gum sidewalls, tan oh, sidewalls. Yeah, on yeah. the newer one, I'm nice. So, because... What is it? Well, that, well, so then what do we do? I don't, I, I don't know. We've never had this before. No. Why have, to, why have you done this to us? You've just broken the matrix. The system no longer works. What, what should we do? Should we ring it or not? You know, your hesitation. Wow, to nice bikes, my friend. Um, try and maybe resubmit the, uh, the Road Winner 84, and who knows? <laughs> right, final one this week, Ollie. Honours, please, my friend. Oh, we've got Chi in the uh, the Rapidan Wildlife Management Area in Virginia. Now, Chi's got his, well, his, his Cervelo R5, and uh, it's a very nice, R5 rim brake. Yeah. Oh, very nice looking bike. Um, I mean, he's, he's got it fully tricked out as well. That look look at, he's got, he's got his Zip 202s. Nice wheels. Yeah, he's got, Super Cas bar tape to match the sort of green and black theme. Yeah, I, I, that's that's a, a subtle subtle touch. I like that. He's got his name sticker on there. He's got the, the cable outer that's running from for the rear brake as well. It's colour coordinated. He's got a fancy looking chain on there. Is that got is that green on there? Yeah, it's, well, I think that's so that wend wax. Yeah, wend like and, waxy um, rubber on. A bit like a deo, bit like a roll on deodorant that stuff. Yeah, he's got oversized pulley wheel on there. Rotor Q rings, is it? His silker bag that is controlled with a dial. Oh, yeah, the cool. Boa dial. They are really cool, they are actually, cool. aren't they? Yeah. Um, and he's got some, you know his matching bottles on. Do you know what I don't like? I yeah, don't what? like what? is that shut up leg sticker on the head tube. I'm really sorry, Jens. I just don't like that. But do you know what? I think the bike is still really, really nice. I mean, what are you going for? I think that all these all these bits he's got on there are cool because he's got his Bontrager front and rear lights, which you can connect to your computer as well. Yeah. So I think they're really cool in the bag. But I just think it's an amazing looking bike, but I would have taken those cool bits off. And I would have also, this is the biggest one for me, right? I wouldn't have had the wheel at a jaunty angle. I would have had the wheel straight. Mm. He's a hard man to please, is Mr. Just, Bridgewood. Oh. Yeah, so I think we're going for nine. <laughs> Gee, I'm really sorry, mate. Uh, <laughs> resubmit it. So close. Pick up everything. You're so close. <laughs> and and maybe, maybe bring the spirit level and like a, a line of string or something like that. A taut line of string, you can line the bike up perfectly. And maybe, just maybe, you'll get him to ring the bell. I don't know. If you resubmit that with the change, changes we've suggested, I will ring the bell. That'll be a first, I think. <laughs> right, there we are, the end of the bike vault. But as ever, you know what to do. Get involved, use the uploader tool found there in the description beneath and submit pictures of your bikes and include where you're from. Right, there we are, nearly time for the end of the show, but don't worry, loads more great content coming up this week because on Saturday, we get to take a look at the bike of Vincenzo Nibali, his time trial bike, and he's a guy who absolutely loves his tech, and believe me, there's some special bits on that. Sunday is Anthony Joshua, the boxer. Look how good I am at boxing. Like he's uh, in the room. Exactly, yeah, like I'm in the <laughs> ring, more like. Uh, we take a look at his 51 Bikes custom machine, and that is an absolute beauty, isn't it? Yeah, I'm really intrigued to see that one. Yeah. Then on Monday, I tell you all about how free hubs and how they work. Yeah, now I hope you enjoyed the GCN Tech Show this week. If you have, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share it with your friends, share it with your enemies too, don't matter. Sharing's and, caring. Uh, <laughs> and also check out the GCN shop. We've got loads of stuff, including GCN Caprons. So if you haven't managed to win one, well, fear not, you can still get one at the shop. Yeah, you can tell your mates that you won one anyway. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. And now, uh, if you want to see Ollie's first look, actually, at the bike of Peter Sagan, that new specialised Roubaix with the updated Future Shock suspension system, click on Ollie. Yeah, and if you want to see the new Sky uh, Pinarello Dogma FS with suspension, well, you can see Lloydie's video on that by clicking on John's face. Again, why do you always tell them to do that?